Good morning, ladies and gents, and welcome to Build Exclusively with Antonio T. Smith Jr. Glad to have each and every one of you on the call. Always excited. Today is Monday, June 5th, 2023. I mean, we are we are halfway through the year already, okay? <laughs> we are in the sixth month, okay? As of this recording. Oh, I'm so sorry, Grace. Go ahead. Why is it? that when the year starts it goes by so fast but the last six months seems like it's drug out like it's stretched and it's taking forever and then the next year comes and then like the first six months it's just you just gone it's like like that six months gone is it just me okay i'm sorry grace you you're okay you're okay i mean still your thunder i just had to ask you 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 got it. Keep doing. It. I was just <laughs> just okay. You go ahead because I don't know when they're gonna do that. <laughs> so sorry. Coffee. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Today we are going. We're still in. We're still in the whole thing of we're struggling with who we are and how that affects our work. We're talking about behavior at home equals behavior at work. We've talked about lack of ambition. We've talked about insufficient education, lack of self-discipline. Today, we are going to talk about ill health. This will be a conversation like we've been doing because I've been loving the conversations. Um, and then we're going to move into artificial intelligence apps, platforms, that you can use to help you monitor, maintain, work on weight, health, things like that. So to get started, if you are an entrepreneur, ill health can negatively impact decision-making, productivity, and the overall operations of the business. If you are on a job, you won't be able to perform your duties and it could affect your pro productivity and overall performance. Now, let's dig in. What are some of the causes of ill health? Poor diet. Okay. Stress. Dutch. Okay. Not exercising. Okay. Emotional instability can cause ill health. Your environment can cause ill health. The people you associate with can cause you ill health. <laughs> Romy Rome laughing. Because he knows it's true. <laughs> Your background can cause ill health. I have a I have a list of things I, I can spit out, but I'm not gonna spit them all. What what else can cause you to have ill health? When you say background, are you talking when are you saying that your history? Mm -hmm. um your background you being like, like dna dna culture how you grew up your background because if you grew up in a family that was adamant about health you're going to be adamant about health but if you grew up in a family that you know every time they cook a meal they put chicken grease in it Okay, I, I got it. I was confused when you said that. The, the environment that they're in, I was going to say that. But also, um, we t when I say we, those of a color, for various reasons, fear being one of them, fail to do medical, you know, our medical checkups. We wait until something hurts, and then we go, and sometimes it's too late at that point. So we, we're, we need to do better with taking care of ourselves medically, both physically and mentally. All right, Miss Adonia, come on. Y'all keep going. I'm finna turn my fan on. We got a little warm in here. 
All right. What else causes what else are causes of ill health? You keep thinking, oh man, maybe I got this. <laughs> and then it turns up you got it. I don't know what to call that. Uh -huh. There's a name for that. I've got the name of it, but there's a name for that, Grace. It really is. Not is it hypochondria? <laughs> don't make me do it because I don't know <laughs> okay so let's dig in how how does Grace can you paste that list for us okay so we have poor diet emotional instability your environment the people you associate with stress not exercising your background. Um, Ms. Adonia said um, not going, not um, not going to your doctor regularly. Not caring. Not being able to afford health care. I'm on Uncle Roman Rome. He just hit us in the gut. All right. Do you understand having finances for health care? Is that what he said? Mm hmm. Not affording right. health care. But I call, uh, I'll call somebody out on that. Why? Because every state, including this expensive state of California, has a government health plan for everybody. Ours is called Covered Californians. Yours is whatever yours is. There's no not, more reason for not, not when you're homeless. Care. Not, I'm when sorry? You're, not when you're homeless. Well, there's truth to that and there's not truth to that. Because if you there's facilities that take care of the homeless that um, as far as um, places to sleep, they have doctors that come in from time to time and they will do checkups for people. So yes, you're right, uh, Grace. Um, it tends to be a lot less um, available for them. A lot of times they won't go, but we also have, they're putting up these little bathroom things where people can actually go, you know, use their drugs, at least in a safely manner. And someone's there to watch them. They won't use them because there's a mental health attached to a lot of people who are homeless. They're afraid they're, you know, they have schizophrenia, all kinds of other diseases that attack their reasonableness and they don't get the services. There are out there. They, it's a struggle though. It really, it really is. So it won't, you know, you're, you're right. Um, but it's not impossible. So that brings up lack of education. Because if you, if you don't know, you won't do. Okay, so what other things, what other things call, call, mm -mm, causes <laughs> ill health or call upon yourself ill health? <laughs> okay, so we have our list. Grace, if you can slide that full list. Oh, I'm sorry, Grace. Ill health and using AI, using AI to combat ill health. That's today's title. Thank you, Grace. You, some, you know, you got to remind me sometimes that, yeah, just jump right on in there sometimes. All right, let's talk. We have our list. So how does having a poor diet affect your business? Cha. <laughs> poor diet affect your business. You feel sluggish all the time. You don't feel like doing anything. You don't want to get up. You don't want to, you really don't want to move. You don't want to, you know, your head be all foggy and stuff sometimes. Um, and it, it will add weight on you. Um, Unwanted weight, we'll say that. <laughs> and, 
Um, yeah, and it's, it's just, it's, it's how it makes you feel. You don't feel, you know, you don't feel like doing anything. Do I have a question? How many of you after eating? Oh, go ahead, Miss Susan. I see you on muted. Go ahead. Uh oh. If you're muted, we can't hear you. How how many of you or how many of you have ever or currently when you eat certain types of foods, like an hour later, your body is telling you, I need a nap. Can you hear me now, Diona? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Miss Susan. Yeah, um, that's only the beginning. You know, when you're in your teens and 20s and you don't eat right and you continue on into your 30s, by the time you're in your 40s, you're going to start seeing this dis-ease, disorder, um, things happening. And, you know, that's always the sad thing because by the time someone retires, um, and especially men, it, they, get, they get into retirement and they retire and sometimes within a year or so they have a heart attack or something because they haven't taken care of themselves all along. And then they go out and start playing golf or doing things and their bodies can't really handle it. So you need to, because, you know, your activities as an entrepreneur or business owner are going to affect your business all throughout your career if you don't take care of it early on it'll be harder and harder to take care of it and management manage it and you'll be on medications and things like that that are then going to affect you know the quality of your work as well so you just won't feel well and it's harder to be really successful when when you don't feel well all right you know me i'm passionate about all that Oh, yes, ma'am. When people don't feel well, it makes me, you know, feel sad for them. Because most of it can be controlled. Yes. All right. I knew if you know your family history, look at your family history and the people around you and the elders around you and the, the issues they have. Those could very well be some of the issues that you could have, but you can counteract that. Yep. And poor, poor diet when it comes to struggling with who you are and how it affects your business. If you've never eaten right and you, like, you can't really, your mobility is limited. You get tired after you eat certain type of meals and that's your body telling you, hey, this does not work for me. I'm going to need you to do something different. I, me, enjoy bread, pasta, rice. But when I eat meals and I consume too much of bread, rice, pasta, or I eat meats that are really heavy on me, give me a good 45 minutes to an hour. I'm going to need a nap. <laughs> Grace moved me on that. But when I eat a salad or some quinoa with some grilled or steamed vegetables and a light meat like a salmon or even, even it's crazy because even eating chicken will weigh me down depending on how it's prepared. I can do grilled chicken all day, but if I do a fried chicken with the mashed potatoes and all that good stuff, mm -mm, it weighs me down. But when I eat grilled chicken with a salad or grilled chicken with some vegetables, I got energy for days. And my when my body tells me, hey, heifer, no, not that. What are you doing? 
this Coca-Cola, this vanilla Coca-Cola with this heavy food is not going to work for us today. It'll weigh you down. But when you drink that glass of water and you have that salad for lunch and then have the steamed vegetables and the, the fish or, you know, for dinner, you can, shoot, I can do a steak and salad and be happy. And be like, all right, let's do it. But let me do a steak with some mashed potatoes or a steak with some macaroni and cheese and some green beans or, you know, some cabbage and corn and cornbread. My body be like, oh, yep, gotta, we got to sleep. I'm going to need some extra energy to work this off. And you being awake is drawing from that. So let's go take a nap. So that diet, that that poor diet is a big deal. I want to nap right now. <laughs> I, I'm not fooling with you today, Grace. I'm not doing it. No mail. <laughs> so that 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 poor diet does a lot. And also when you eat the wrong way, like Miss Susan said, there's a, there's things that you can't do. Like go play golf if you eat if you're eating the wrong way and you have a major client that you're trying to close and they're big golfer there's a lot of walking standing and patience when it comes to golf and there's a lot of upper body strength a lot of lower body strength if you swing that if you swing that club the wrong way you may pull something but if you don't even have the energy to carry your clubs, if you don't have a, I think it's called a caddy or a cabbie. Is it a B or a D? I can't remember. I think it's D, caddy. Caddy. But if you don't have a caddy, you got to carry those clubs yourself. And if you don't have the funds to get the to get the the the, the one that uh, rolls, you screwed. <laughs> because, because of your poor diet, you don't have the strength to carry it. I'm tell y'all right now. Give me a pair. Of, give give me a set of golf clubs and tell me. Oh, you have to carry these around. I will find it. I will be paying somebody. Okay, here you go. These are yours. But if I had the strength, because I had the great diet and I've been working out and I've been doing this and doing that, me carrying it by myself ain't no big deal, ladies. When it comes to rocking them six inch heels. You got a poor diet, them heels gonna hurt. You're gonna be wobbling and stumbling. Your ankles gonna hurt. Your calf muscles gonna hurt. Your knees gonna hurt. Your thighs gonna hurt. Your butt tops gonna hurt. Cause them, them muscles, them, them, those muscles, man, look, let me tell you something. Your hips gonna hurt. Your toes gonna hurt. You're gonna be blistered up. I mean, it's it's a lot. And then when you try to show up at these meetings and you trying to look a certain way in your business suits, you have formals you need to go to. Having a poor, having a poor diet will move into your emotional instability because now you're not eating right. You don't feel good. So emotionally, you're kind of like, I can't do this. I don't look right. I don't have anything to wear. I don't know how it is for me, so I can only talk for women. Well, I can only talk for me. So men, if y'all can help us out, because we don't know. How does poor diet affect y'all? Men, we, 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 we can't, we can't, do y'all feel the same way? <laughs> there's only two men on there's only two men on the call. <laughs> I know I I you know what, Uncle Romy Rome? It is only two men on the call. Y'all, y'all are the voice of the men. Y'all gotta help us women out because we don't know. We don't know how poor diet affects you guys. Well, we can only assume. So when it comes to poor diet and affecting your business. And statistics. 
And that's, there you go. The it's how a hard thing for people. It It's a really hard thing for people. Um, people get defensive on it. Um, mm -hmm. They don't mean to, it just, just happens. So it's, it's something that. I meant it, I meant it. Yeah, you don't you don't want to just go out there and you know say to people, you know, only people that you feel comfortable with or say we're on this team thing here um, and getting serious about all the things. But it is a, a sensitive issue um, for people because there's emotional. It's a, it's an emotional thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that leads us to number two. Thank you, Ms. Susan, for the wonderful segue. It's number two, which is emotional instability. Well, Deanna, how's emotional instability part of ill health? Mental health is a real thing. It's a real thing. And did you know that a poor diet can also factor into your emotional and mental instability the foods that you eat there's certain stuff in the foods that you eat that absorb into your body and they affect you and if you're emotionally unstable how do you think that translate in, translates into your business you attracting a whole lot of poor, eaten, emotionally insta in, uh, emotionally unstable customers who are just like you. And so when it comes to them using your product, when it comes to them doing what they need to do, they're going to have the same excuses as you. I mean, think about it, just, just for a second. If you eat, you get sleepy, and you wake up, and you're like, man, I knew I couldn't do it. I knew I couldn't get that project done on time. I knew I wasn't going to be able to work on this, on this software. What do you think your customers are doing? They're doing the same thing that you're doing, and then they turn around and three months in, if they have a monthly membership, they're like, uh, I want to cancel this. And now you're losing money. Because they have a poor diet and they're emotionally unstable. Unstable. There we go. They're emotionally unstable. Because you have a poor diet and you're emotionally unstable. Your, goal, your clients are of a... a <clears throat> Your clients are a vibrational equivalent of you. So how you are as a customer is how your clients are going to be towards you. So if you want the customers who eat right, who are emotionally stable, who have great environments, who understand that the people that they associate with who live a stress-free full of exercise, lifestyle, who who their background is, like Miss Susan's, she started off young, like, hey, I don't want this. So let's start eating right now. And they actually care about what they put into their body. And they understand and they can afford the healthcare. When you attract those kind of customers, You have, you, I'm going to sum everything up in this one sentence. Everything we're talking about, I'm going to sum up in this one sentence. I forgot what the sentence was, just that thing. Never mind. Just that fast. It came and it went. It came and it went. But you, ah, you are your customer. So you be the customer you want to attract. So if you want the customers who are healthy, you want the customers who are emotionally stable, you become that customer. 
Now, when they first come to you, no, they're not going to be perfect, but they are vibrating at your frequency because they, they're, they are looking to evolve into that. So how does, how does emotionally un, how does emotional instability at home affect you at work? Let's dig in in that way. Well, if every time I emotional eating at home means you you emotionally eat at work. Grace, you're not supposed to talk about that. Sorry. <laughs> But that's a good one. Ooh, that's a good one. Because when you're at home and something happens, you don't feel good. You go, you go grab that pint of ice cream and you kill it. When you at work, if something don't go right, how many of you have or had a junk drawer at work? I would go find people at school who had who I knew had chocolate. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Phil had a junk drawer. Yay. <laughs> no, let me rephrase what, what I'm referring to. You had a drawer that only had snacks in it. Junk food drawer. <laughs> I had candy. I had cookies. I had chips. Um, What else did I have in my junk drawer? Mm. I had everything. And I learned it from one of my supervisors because mind you, when I started working, I was 17 and I was working in a private school and I was working with little two and three-year-olds. So we always had snacks. I didn't think nothing of it. My very first in an office job was when I worked for the lady who had the travel, the, um, travel, court, the travel coordination company. And it was out of her house, but she had a certain area that she had set up as an office. We had this huge board. It was fun. I used some like little electrical tape, like about this thin and made little grids and everything on it. We wrote on it. But I didn't know about the junk drawers. I just used to keep all my stuff in my bag. I didn't know I could, you know, I had a desk. I didn't know I could like leave stuff in my desk. I wasn't sure. And then the lady who was my immediate supervisor, I would always see her reaching her desk and she was always snacking on different things, like different candies, you know, things like that. And I'm like, and she asked me, I just say, you know, do you want such and such? I was like, sure. Oh, I'm, a, I, I'm freaking eight. I'm 17. And you asking a 17 year old if they want some candy? I'm not that grown. And boy, when she opened up that drawer, I was like, jackpot. And I started creating my own. Everywhere I went, I had a junk drawer. Unless it was like a communal space and, you know, you shared a desk with somebody. Actually, no. Yeah. And so I carried my junk drawer with me. That's when I kept it in my bag. And then when I got my, when I had a desk, it was a whole drawer. And everybody knew, don't touch Deanna's junk drawer. Don't touch Dee's junk drawer. And every time I felt some kind of way, I would reach into my junk drawer. I had uh, blow pops, Hershey's, Hershey's Kisses. Those was my favorite. Don't touch my Hershey's Kisses. But every time I felt some kind of way, I would pop in something in my mouth. Always snacking, always eating. The, that, that original Chex Mix, go hard. Let me just say that. That Italian is good, too. Let me tell you something. It tastes just like a pizza. It tastes, it tastes like garlic. It tastes like the bread, the garlic bread. Hello, my name is Deanna. And I'm an emotional eater. Hi, Deanna. <laughs> <laughs> but how does that affect you at work? Like, let's let's dig in. Like, how does how does that affect you at work? If you and being an emotional eater. You always eating at work, but then like, and then your paperwork, like if you have paperwork all over your desk and you got like greasy prints on stuff and you may 
drop something and get it messy like it's 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 not effective you know you 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 know you've got to present a report and you printing stuff out and putting it together and snacking at the same time because you're nervous about this presentation and when 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 everybody get their presentation they flipping through and they have greasy fingerprints here and they got you know pizza sauce stain right there and <laughs> They got an ice cream spot right here. <laughs> it's just, it's so much. It is so much. How else does being emotionally unstable affect you? Being emotionally stable at home affect you at work? My emotional unstableness is because of work. No, no, just kidding. But, but let, me, let me tell you the bad habits at work. Um, I'll call her the candy lady. So our county manager um, has a big candy dish. There's always, and I'm, I'm not a chocolate person anymore, um, always, always Snickers, Kit Kats, mm. always, always, always the deadly, the deadly candy Twix that, mm. you know, people like. So, and my, and I, my office is across from her office. So I get all the company down the hallway uh, going into her office, right? I used to be that person and I only did it usually when I was tired, which is the worst time to do it, or maybe irritated or, or, you know, I just needed to get away from my desk. Where do you go in her office? Luckily I have some sense and said, I'm not doing that no more. Cause I'm, I am eating healthier and not consuming much sugar, but they buy bagels at least once or twice a week and then donuts. And then we have customers that bring us these big old, oh my goodness, these baked, I can't even tell you what they are. They have, um, meat in them and they're like bisque oh my god they're just ridiculous we they bring us stuff and then i got recruiters and people from other agencies that want our business come in they bring in your cookies it, it's ridiculous work is an awful place if you want to be healthy um i have to really ignore a lot of people i've gotten better at it much better actually because i am i am not um, eating sugar um like i used to intentionally but it took a minute to to realize and walk past them them bagels and donuts from Krispy Kreme. I'm telling you, is it's a terrible place if you want to be healthy. Work you can stop by your office. Wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Man, the tamale lady gets us down here. The 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 ladies that uh, make the homemade tamales, like real tamales. And then they come by tamales. You get a it, and they they don't sell less than a dozen. Like they 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 come a dozen a whop. And then you sitting there, you're like, man, I want some, I want some beef. Oh, and then I can have some chicken for dinner. Go ahead, give me a dozen of beef and a dozen of chicken. And then when you get home, you put some cheese on it. You either put some chili and cheese on it, or you put some sour cream and picante sauce and cheese on. Like these are the things. But if you're emotionally unstable and you're at work, so if you're emotionally unstable at home, you snap, like you'll pop off at your family. How does that look at work? Same way. You'll pop off somebody at the job. And sometimes you pop off at the wrong one. <laughs> You'll get a Trenace. <laughs> Trenace are like, oh, no, not today. You got the wrong one. Wrong one. Not today. We're going to talk about this because what you're not going to do is take out what happened at home mode on me. What if you, if you're emotionally unstable at home and you're passive aggressive, how does that look at work? You'd be passive aggressive at work. Um, how does that look? Having seeking problems with people on your job. Maybe the boss, but your coworkers. And you know, you um they how can I say it? Anytime that maybe they let's say if they suggest something, you know, y'all in the meeting they suggest something, you go, your face gonna turn up or whatever. <laughs> something like that, you know. Oh, they picked up for that. She ain't gonna get it right here. Anyway. Okay. I know, Miss. I know, Miss. I know she can't talk about it, but I know Miss Adonia get yeah, all kind of emotionally and mentally unstable in her office. 
I know she can't talk about it. I know she can't. First off, you know, that's a job. And then secondly, I know them people, I know she'd be looking at the people like, babe, what happened to you at home? How did you grow up? Like, because if you're emotionally unstable at home and you're emotionally unstable at work, that means your childhood was crazy and you did not know or understand how to process those emotions. So they grew with you. They just they just manifested in different ways as you grew older. If you are, if emotionally you are closeted at home, you're going to be overly out at work. Cry at the drop of the hat, get angry quick. If you don't know how to process your emotions at home, it's going to come out on your job. And if you are a business owner, can you imagine how many of your customers you push away because of your emotional instability? Let me give you another scenario. In your emotional instability, you're given a major project. And because you don't feel like it, because someone ran you hot or pissed you off or told or said something to you and you like, you know what? You do it. And you leave that stuck on your desk. No work gets done. How else does being emotionally unstable at home affect you at work? And then that moves into number four, number three, your environment. How does your personal environment affect you at work and when, when it comes to your health? These are actually all, if I'm reading them, um, these are actually like all one thing and they all stem from home life. If I grow, if I grew up, you know what? I'm gonna ask Miss Susan. Miss Susan, if you're available, how did your environment affect affect your work life? Miss <gasps> Jan. Until Miss Susan can slide on Grace. How oh, I'm you? sorry. I thought I was unmuted. I was talking. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Okay. No worries. It it depends on which work environment that would be. My first work environment was when I was still in college. Hmm. And I took over for the lady who ran the entire thing while she took off in the summer to be with her kids. And here I was you know, 18, 19 years old. And these were with lumberjack people. These were, you know, hardcore. Co they'd come in with the big trucks loaded with the lumber that, you know, they would then get paid for. And it got so that I could tell what type of lumber it was and about what the cost would be just by looking at the big load. But I, I, I had to learn there that type of people, you know, that came in, they felt awkward around me. They were trying to, you know, they were people outdoors, you know, all day long and not around people. So they felt awkward. Um, I didn't have any, they were very protective and kind to of me. They were good people and same with the, with the boss. He, um, and he was great. So that was a good environment and a good environment for me to hone my skills that I was learning in college. Um, then I worked for, you know, the, the government with secret and top secret information. And there was a lot of things going on there that were kind of difficult to deal with. But I found ways, you know, I didn't want to sit in my chair all day. That drove me crazy. I thought, I can't do this. So I'm 65 years old, sit. 
Um, so I would get up and, and walk and go back to, you know, at that time, it was a whole floor for computer programming and work with the computer programmers and, you know, find ways to have to take things to them and that. So I never stayed sitting in my seat. So I made that a priority and they knew that. They didn't know why, but they knew I was busy out and about. Um, so I set that myself where the lady sitting across from me she sat there all day with nothing to do staring at me you know um and so I didn't like that um and then when I moved to Cape Cod and worked with that company I really had a lot of freedom um to do what I wanted to do um you know but there was a situation there that caused me to come believe that and that's when I met Phil and you know the chaos and the the entrepreneur thing you know working from wherever just I mean that all started then and you know we 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 always kind of had an outside office uh, where we people were and then we had a home office and sometimes when we would travel we'd have them be in there just to to you know, watch over our home. So we we found ways. You find ways to make it work. And, you know, I liked working from home because, you know, I could I could have my refrigerator there with what I wanted, but I always packed healthy meals um, wherever I went. And even if we went to events, I'd check the menus before we go. I know what they're what they're serving, whether I'd eat it or not. All right. Yeah. I don't know when I muted myself, but I have a tendency to have a heavy hand on that mute button. On and off. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, I hope that helped. Oh no, it it did help because your environments flow within your ill health and health is one of the things that I learned or was indirectly taught or was not taught growing up is health was only regarding medical like your physical health like how you breathe how you walk stuff like that but emotional and mental health was not something that was discussed and, you know, I had an autoimmune disease that started as a child. So my environment was toxic to me. The food that was in the refrigerator there was toxic to me. Didn't know that that was contributing to it until I got in my early 20s and figured it out on my own. Because back in the 60s, they had me in the hospital for a week, you know, and it was right after Christmas and gave me Barbie dolls and all this stuff to play with. And I'm just sitting there. What are they doing? They're giving me Maalox. And none of that worked because I didn't know what to do. Um, but I was, you know, covered in head to toe with psoriasis. I was a statistic, still enlisted as a statistic because nobody that young ever had it everywhere. I had it everywhere except my hands and face. So I could cover that up and nobody knew. But it was extremely painful and I never slept. So it affected every area of my life, even school, schoolwork. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't really pay attention because I was tired and itching and everything else. So it was, it was difficult. So I had to figure it out on my own once I, you know, grew up and, you know, things started to change as far as medical. I mean, think back in the 40s before penicillin and all that how people survived struggle yeah or they were forced to change their diet they were forced to change their environment they were forced to change the people that they associated with well and it was better they really ate better because they didn't there was no fast foods then you know you ate what you grew um so they, you know, in that respect, they were healthier. 
There you go. Thank you very much, Miss Susan. Grace, if you can repost that list for us. So the causes of ill health that we have come up with that we all discussed was poor diet, emotional instability, your environment, the people you associate with, stress, not exercising, your background and when I and thank you Mr. Donia for asking that question so when I when I mean your background I mean how you grew up where you grew up your genetics and then just not caring causes ill health if you don't care about the foods you eat if you don't care about working out if you don't if you don't care about your mental and emotional health if you don't care about none of that you, I, mean, I don't care eat what I want to eat Drink what I want to drink, do what I want to do. And then, like Miss Susan said, when you hit your forties, your body be like, "Yo, <laughs> you ain't you ain't young no more. You can't go clubbing like you used to. You can't drop it like it's high like you used to. You can't you can't push that lawnmower like you used to. You can't go hang out with the fellas like you used to." By eight o'clock, your body like, yo, <laughs> nah, sis, it's time to go sleep. I'm tired. <laughs> We're not doing this tonight. Or you become sluggish. You become sluggish. You can't walk around a, a grocery store. You can't get halfway down the aisle before you have to pause and take a deep breath, breaking out in sweats. You can't make it from the parking lot you have you have to find those close up parking spots because you can't make it halfway through the parking lot before you have to pause and take a deep breath. You hit three steps and you got to stop, take a breath, and then you hit three more. You be like, "Whew, how many more floors we got? Oh, just this one." Oh. The last apartment that my brother just moved from had three flights of steps. But each flight, it was a pair. So you went up, you went up and then up. And that's how you got to the second. Then up and then up. And then that's how you got to third. Have y'all have y'all ever tried moving furniture up technically six flights of stairs? Fun. Greatest fun ever. I helped. I ain't care no furniture though. I told him I'm, I'm too old for this. You playing. I'm too old for this. I'm not doing this. I'm I'm too old for this. You younger than me, you stronger than me. Go ahead, y'all work that out. I care these little things. <laughs> I'll arrange it once it get to the once it get upstairs. Uh -uh. Too old for this. I'm not doing that. But in all honesty, if I would have kept up with a healthy diet and working out like I used to, that would have been nothing nothing at all and then not being able to afford health care you have some people that have to decide between medication and gas you have some people that have to decide between health care for the whole family or just health care for them and then grace said um grace uh miss miss adonia said miss adonia wisely said every state has a, the has a government agency or a government program for health care but then grace said not the homeless and then miss adonia said well the places that homeless the homeless are able to go to they can do that but then you have those but then they don't take the medicines because they're they're mentally unstable and they they don't know, or they won't, or they they may think, oh, y'all just trying, the government trying to get me. They were in a foil hat, so their, so their minds can't be read. And one thing I have learned listening to Antonio, you will call a person crazy until it actually happened. Side note. Maybe some people going around here wearing full head, full hats, and then we think they crazy. And one day we sit here like, "How did you know what I was thinking? Why you, why you read my mind?" 
And you're going to be like, I should have had a full hat. But anyways, sidebar. <laughs> but not being able to afford health care causes ill will. I mean, causes ill health. And then you have those that don't even know that government assistance is available for, for, for health, for the medical health. And because they don't know, things happen. And they don't know how to... And, and they're just there, like, like Mr. Donnie said. And then we don't go for regular checkups. Cause, one of the causes of ill health is uh, no regular maintenance. We are just like cars. If you take your car in for a tune-up, you got to go to the doctor for tune-up. My dad was telling me stories about when he was younger. And he said back then, you know, your granny didn't take us to the doctor regularly. But because of where my dad worked, he, they, because of where he worked, they had to do like annual checkups. They had to do annual visits. They had to get annual, all kinds of stuff. So while he was working, he was, always going to the doctor and then miss susan wonderfully said it starts when you're a kid when you eat a certain way as a kid when you get older and you you don't do certain things things start breaking down when you get older and they retire and it, and everything my dad was all my dad was always moving as a kid but when it came to his diet he was eating what we traditionally eat homemade biscuits he was telling me the other day about how his his aunt made homemade biscuits that was the side like this thick and it, this thick and then that big around he was eating fried rabbit and <laughs> bacon and but he but he was always active but now that he's older he's he's had bypass surgery you know now he has knee pains So a lot of this falls into, and when you have these issues, these issues carry over to your business. And you aren't able to fully function in your business when you're struggling with your health. Either you're too tired or you can't because you're always at back and forth at the doctors or because you 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 mentally can't handle it, you're snapping at people, which means you're snapping at customers, which means you're losing money. You're snapping at employees, so you're losing employees. So who you are at home when it comes to your health is who you are at work. And it's not just your physical, it's your physical, your mental, and your emotional. We're not even going to tap into the spiritual. I'm going to leave that one alone because if you ain't spiritually right at home, it ain't going to be. You, just think of it this way. You are your customer. Whoever you are is who you are going to attract as a customer. So if you do have a poor diet, your customers have poor diets. If you're emotionally unstable, your customers are emotionally unstable. If your environment is causing you ill health, you can guarantee so is theirs. If the people you associate with are making you sick, your customers, the people your customers associate with are making them sick. If you stay stressed, your customers are stressed. If you're not exercising, your customers, y'all get the point. You know, I don't have to go through the whole list. <laughs> so let's talk about artificial intelligence and how it can help you. This is going to be fun. Because guess what I'm going to do? We're going to go to ChatGPT and see what we can do. All right. So this morning, I did a little playing around on purpose. and. I put in some information. So we're going to start with ChatGPT. 
So I told ChatGPT, I weigh 230 pounds. I want to lose weight and get down to 165 pounds. I also want to eat healthier. I have fat around my midsection. I said muffin top, you know, a little muffin top. I want to get rid of my midsection. I want to eat healthier. And I want to be able to run for, ex for extended and long periods of time. Now, this is me. This is me. Put in, you have to be honest when you're talking to chat GPT. I watch a lot of zombie apocalypse movies. I watch a lot of post-apocalyptic movies. And let me tell you something. The one thing that I have learned is I need to be in the, in the case of an apocalypse or a, a, in a, in a post-apocalyptic world, be it zombies or a nuclear or it was a nuclear blast and it's, now it's post-apocalyptic. I have to, I know I have to be aware of zombies. I have to be aware of um things that have mutated due to the nuclear fallout, all these kind of things. See, this is stuff I think about. So I understand I'm going to be able to, I'm going to have to need to run. I'm going, this is me. This is me. <laughs> I understand I'm going to need to run for an extended period of time. I'm going to need upper body strength. So I need to be able to work out because I'm going to need to be able to climb. And then I need to be small because I need to be able to fit into small spaces so I can hide. So everything I put into ChatGPT is based on my imagination, but also based on how, how I want to be healthy. So with that being said, let's head on back. I want to be able to run for extended and long periods of time. And then also Antonio and I was watching this TV show called The Mole. And, you know, they had, excuse me, they had to do these different challenges. And one of them was hiking up a snowy peak. And they had to, and as they were going, they had different you know, spots that they stopped at. In each of these different spots, they had to put something onto this little thing that they were pulling. And it got heavier and heavier. I want to be able to have the strength to still do that. So I say using the Dr. Sebi meal plan and not using weights. Can you give me a meal plan and a workout plan for this? Now, again, now we're moving into how artificial intelligence can help you with your ill health. And this is what it gave me. It told me, sure, I can provide a general meal plan and workout plan that can help you. Now, this is general, which means I'm going to have to go in, but I'm using this as a starting point. So look at this. It gave me a one-day meal plan. Now, remember the last time we uh, talked about, we talked about you need to eat at least like six to seven, five to seven times a day. Look at this, breakfast, that's one meal. It gave me two options. I like the spinach omelet option. That sounds real good. Then it gives me a snack, mixed nuts or a piece of fruit. That's the second meal. Then it gave me lunch, third meal. We look, grilled chicken breast, a baked salmon uh, with steamed vegetables and quinoa or mixed green salad with chickpeas. I'm about to try chickpeas and I'm try those. Then you have the snack. That's the fourth one. This is artificial intelligence helping me with my ill health. Then I have dinner, five to six times a day. And then it gives me another snack after dinner. Then it tells me, remember to stay hydrated throughout the day by drinking plenty of water. So it's reminding me, you got to put some water in your, you got to put some water up in there. Then it gave me a workout plan. Five to 10 minute warm up. It gave me cardiovascular exercises. Then it gave me core exercises. Then it gives me endurance training. Then it broke down, give you a cool down. And it tells me gentle stretching, focusing on lower back, hips, and legs. So you can use artificial intelligence to give you a full meal plan if you need to, and then give you an exercise plan. So that's one way artificial intelligence can help you with your ill health. You ask it a question, it gives you an answer.
<laughs> Grace, your facial extra. What is with your? Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. So let's do this. All right. Who wants to be? I don't want to say a guinea pig. So let's say who wants to volunteer? I will. <laughs> Nobody else will. So, Grace, what do you want to do? I would like to get down to 150 and be toned. 150 pounds, and I want to be toned. Anything change, else? Change done, done to down. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and uh, be able to maintain the weight with diet. Do you mind if I tell ChatGPT your age? No. Okay. 42. Oh, girl, I keep taking a year off your... I appreciate it. But... <laughs> Grace, shouldn't it be diet and exercise? Because exercise burns calories. Yes, ma'am. Okay. No, she meant what she said. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's a, she's good at exercising oh yeah i have no problem exercising roman rome is the eating <laughs> it's the eating right mm. there's a reason I put that in there because I have learned a few different things all right can you is there a specific type of diet or you just want Carlos to just give you what Carlos gives you I don't oh oh hold on <laughs> You got to stop the kids from fighting, huh? Yeah. All right. Oh, I don't know. I don't know specific diets. Okay. So um, can you? Yeah. It, okay. If if Carlos could. Meal plan or workout plan that will help me lose weight. And now, Grace, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Because the more information you give Carlos, mm -hmm. the more he can give you. Mm -hmm. Do you mind giving us your weight now? 166. Okay. All right. Here we go. I'm currently 166 pounds. I want to get down to 150 pounds and I want to be toned. I also want to be able to maintain this weight with how I eat. I'm 42 years old and I've never had any children, so I don't have to worry about the effects of that when it comes to losing weight and working out. Can you give me an effective meal plan and workout plan that will help me lose weight and work out? Let's see. Maybe include height. Include height. Oh. Yeah. Five one. Five foot one inch. <laughs> yeah, I got you by two inches. All right, here we go. Let's see. And bam. Slightly. Now, the reason why you put so much information into chat GPT is because it is an artificial intelligence platform, which means it has a lot of information stored, which means it also has a lot of information stored when it comes to certain things like 
BMI and possibility of this and possibility of that. So you want to give it as much information as you can so it can give you back the proper information. Okay, now Grace. Huh. Scrambled eggs or egg whites with vegetables, with spinach, bell peppers, mushrooms, and that's actually really good. I've done that before. It's really good. A whole grain toast or oatmeal, a small serving of fruit. And you can do snacks, Greek yogurt. There's your lunch. Oh, a small portion of quinoa. Huh. Tofu. I have not gotten into tofu yet. Uh, your snacks, sliced vegetables with hummus. Me, I prefer the garlic hummus. They don't even make the taco hummus anymore. I heard my feelings. They had some taco hummus that tasted just like tacos. Beautiful. For dinner, baked salmon or lean meat, chicken, chicken or turkey. It tells you what the lean meat is. So don't be going to get the little lean steaks <laughs> or the lean That's pork it. chops. That's it. it. Chicken, turkey. <laughs> or none of that packaged, you know, lunch meat things. That's, oh. that's really not good for you at all. Mm -mm. Real high in sodium too. Oh, a small portion of sweet potato or quinoa. A small uh, snack is a small serving of low-fat cottage cheese or protein shake. I have tried cottage cheese. I've tried it with fruit. I've tried it. I have tried it. I can't. I could perfect that menu. <laughs> come, so come on, Miss Miss Susan. Say, <laughs> cottage on, cheese. Come on, come on. I mean, you know, cottage cheese is not good. <laughs> It mm. Ooh, great. So avocado instead oh. of that. Avocado. Avocados. Avocados with pico de gallo with seasoning on it. Oh, right. oh it's wonderful. With some oil and vinegar. Mm. All right, Grace. Look, here's your workout plan. Cardiovascular exercise. Aim for 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobic exercise per week you can choose activities like a brisk walk which grace does congratulations jogging cycling oh swimming see that i'll be right there put me in the pool i'll be in there for hours be like uh d what happened well you know fingers wrinkled and layers of skin <laughs> <laughs> you can ask Grace. I could spend hours in the pool. I love swimming. I used to swim in the rain. Deanna. Yes, ma'am. Because you love it so much. My friend swims every morning and love because she loves swimming. She doesn't like any of the other exercise, but she loves swimming. You need to find a place, a gym with a pool and go on a regular basis um, because that's what you like to do. And that will you know, you can do that for the rest of your life. And it, it's the greatest. It's something about the water. First off, water is calming to me. So I'm working out in a calm environment. And then I can't hear anything. So it's just me and my thoughts. <laughs> and when you when you swimming and it's quiet, you know, you, you can talk to yourself. Nobody but, can bother you when you're swimming. You know, you're. You zoned in. And, so. you know, you don't have to, it's not always swimming laps, you know, you can just get in play and splash around in the water and things like that. Or you, you could take water aerobic classes. Yeah. Fun too. There you go. See? Oh, Grace, dancing. Oh, that's good. So on those rainy mornings or rainy evenings when you can't go for your walk, you can put on a song and create your own step or just step to do steps that you used to know that. I mean, I've seen steps and let me tell y'all something. They, y'all think that ain't nothing, man. Look, I didn't, and I have seen great step before. It's a, it's a routine. They be having a whole routine. Hey. <laughs> it, they be sweating after too. We jump it in the eye, legs in the out because they got to clap between the legs. So that means they have to have a uh, flexibility. But the man, look, let me tell you something. Look, then you have strength training. Strength well, training. On the dancing for Grace, there's, you know, we work with um, Fred Astaire Dance Studios. And if there's some near you or something similar to that, you can go over there and take dance lessons. And they're fun. It's like a social thing. 
and you can meet gentlemen there too grace Ooh. all right now Miss susan <laughs> all right now <laughs> grace i just Check shared, it out yes i just shared that chat this whole chat with you now chat she be thank you you're welcome chat gpt has been upgrading so as you see over here when you click your chat this little section right here it allows you to when i click that it allows me to do this i saw that yesterday i was like whoa they, they yeah they have been on that job of upgrading grace right now in these few seconds i can think of four couples that i know that met at dance studios and our husband and wife now and and have a very happy life oh all right now miss susan grace, grace gonna be it's her way <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you can use chat gpt to help you when it comes to your weight loss plan or um, your meal your meal plan and your exercise plan. Now let's look at some other artificial intelligence information that can help us with this. So when it comes to losing weight and exercising, you have a few different apps that you can use. The one that Antonio uses is called the Nike Training Club. Now that offers a wide range of guided workout programs and exercise routines. It also provides video demonstrations, personalized training plans, and allows you to track your workouts and progress over time. And that's the Nike, you know, the check, the swoosh training club. So if you, I hope all of you follow Antonio on Instagram. And if you do, you will actually see his progress. you'll actually see him tracking his progress and posting it, showing you, hey, look what I did today. Hey, look how far I got today. Then you have Fitbit. I remember Fitbit. And then I got my Apple Watch. Yeah. <laughs> but Fitbit, is a wearable device and app combination. So you wear, it has, it's a watch. And then you have the app on the phone and it tracks your physical activity, your heart rate. It tracks your sleep patterns. Cause that's one thing we didn't talk about. What causes ill health? Lack of sleep. Have you ever noticed how if you go a whole week with irregular sleep, or if you go an extended period of time, like any type of irregular sleep, you're not getting enough hours and you, and you're working out, you're doing all this stuff during the week, but you're not getting enough sleep. And all of a sudden you get a cold that knocks you on your ass. Like you just out of there. Like you just completely out of there, man. Look, I didn't, it didn't, it has, I, I know because I have experienced it. Antonio got so nervous one time. He was like, do we need to go to the hospital? Because I was out of it for two weeks. Two straight weeks. I spent two weeks in bed, medicated. It was so bad. I was combining uh, medicine and herbs. Had incense burning, candles lit. <laughs> I was nervous for myself. I was like, I ain't been sick this long before. I didn't got knocked on my butt before, but this is different. You got to be careful combining herbs and medications. Oh, definitely. It's dangerous. Just an FYI for, for everyone here. It no, be very dangerous. Definitely, because not only while herbs are natural, the medicines you take derive from herbs. Some herbs interact with each other in a negative way. And then some herbs counteract medication. That's why that's why they always tell you if you're choosing a different path, a holistic path or anything like that, talk to your doctors first because the, the medicines that they're giving you to help you stay healthy, those herbs will pretty much knock out and, and make those medications non-existent in your body. So you do have to be careful. Please under... I, 
please talk to your doctor before you do crazy stuff like I just said. Don't just do it. I'm me. I just, it was that bad, okay? It was that bad. <laughs> it was that bad. Let me tell you something. It was horrible. It was, it was horrible. <laughs> Don't, and I haven't gone through it since. I have not been that sick in a very long time. And I'm grateful. I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson. So you have Fitbit. I loved Fitbit. Fitbit was one of my favorite ones. And then you have My Fitness Pal. And these are apps that help you with losing weight and exercising. Now, my fitness, the thing I like about My Fitness Pal is you can invite friends. And you and your friends can go like toe to toe with each other. Be like, hey, Grace, guess what? I walked five miles today. And Grace gonna be like, oh, no, food. I got you. Check out this. And she go walk six. I'll be like, oh, she got me messed up. So the next day I will walk seven. And that's why I like my fitness pal because it, it keeps you, it, it brings about community because you can be friends with people you don't even know. And you only know on my fitness pal. And now you have a community, you, it gives you a community of people doing the same thing as you. And that will help you with your emotional and your mental uh, unstableness when it comes to doing that because nobody wants to do something alone. Some people, they, right. they want to have that person to share that experience with. And yeah. my fitness pal helps you with And you have some people who are competitive. Yeah, like me. I'll be going walking by myself and I'd be like, man, I wish Dee was here. Because it would go by so much faster because we'd be talking and walking at the same time. <laughs> and then me and Grace are competitive. Ain't no way. Grace finna walk more miles than me. It's not gonna happen. Because... <laughs> It's not, it's not going to happen. But My Fitness Pal is a popular app that helps you keep track of both your diet and your exercise. And one of the things I love about My Fitness Pal is you can, My Fitness Pal allows you to also go into stores and you can, you can scan using the barcode on the food. You can scan the food that you're eating and it'll give you what the calories are, what the breakdown is. So if you if you're a person who reads labels, it breaks down that that label for you and it lets you know, okay, this is how many calories is in this, this is how many servings of this. Or you can type in what you're eating and it'll give you options to select from. So let's say you have an a cheat day, but you're still monitoring and you decide you want to go get a, a double quarter pounder with cheese and bacon from mcdonald's with a large french fry and a large coke it used to be one of my meals don't judge me uh <laughs> then i go on my fitness pal and i put in a double quarter pounder with cheese and it'll say large meal medium meal small meal and i'm gonna choose large and i'm gonna put large diet coke I mean, large Coke, Diet Coke, a large Coca Cola, <laughs> and a large French fry. And if I decide to get an apple pie, I can do the apple pie too. And let me tell you something my fitness pal will make you feel so fat and unhealthy. It will. Because you be sitting there and you thinking you're doing good and you pull up how many calories is in that particular meal, you be like, I don't even want this anymore. I don't even want it. Cause you tell my fitness pal like how how much you want to how how much you want to lose, the time you want to lose it in, and it'll give you okay. So your daily caloric diet intake should be no more than like 2,400 calories or 1,200 calories. And then you decide you want to have a cheat day. Or you just, you're still eating however you want to eat, but you're eating, but you're working out and you put in that cheeseburger and you realize that cheeseburger is 75% of your caloric intake for the day. You're going to be like, I want this. I ain't going to be able to eat no more. <laughs> and for someone like me who likes to eat, that upsets my soul. You telling me I can only eat one meal today if I eat this? That's not fair. That is, the, and it'll it'll make you rethink your meal plan. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna need to go ahead and re-download my fitness app. 
Now that I'm thinking about it, let's go. Let's go. We're gonna do it together. Yes. <laughs> My fitness power will hurt your feelings and then and shift your mindset real quick. And for some people, you have to put that in your, you have to put it in your face. Like they have to see what they're doing to their body for them to change. And then my fitness pal also tracks your workout. So it, it'll tell you how many calories you've lost. But then you have these smart ass people like me be like, okay, so let me see. If I work out for 30 minutes, I can burn 500 calories. I'm, I'm just throwing numbers out y'all. That's not what. And if I burn these 500 calories, I can eat this burger. You have people that do that. I used to do that. I'm not, I'm, I promise y'all, I'm only telling y'all what I've done. Do that too. Yes. I used, I, when it came to my, and it'll, but then I'll be like, but I don't want to have to do all that because I don't like working out. So then it started making me change how I ate so I can eat more during, so I can eat more in the day and not have to work out more. And I know that sounds crazy, but this, this is, this is, ill health is a mental thing that manifests physically. It's in, it's mental and it's emotional and it manifests physically. So if you can play with your mental, it'll work on your emotional and then you'll start seeing it in your physical. Cause trust me, I used to play, it'll make you play mind games with yourself. It's crazy. My fitness pal, whoever created my fitness pal, kudos to you. Cause let me tell you something. <laughs> so my fitness pal, it allows you to track your diet and your exercise. It provides a large database of food items. It allows you to log your meals, count your calories, set your goals and track your progress. It also offers personalized recommendations based on your health and fitness goals. So, so far we went over the Nike Training Club, Fitbit, and My Fitness Pal. Google Fit is a health tracking app as well. And it uses AI algorithms to analyze your activity levels, your heart rate, and other health metrics. It also provides customized goals, track your steps, and integrates with various fitness apps. So you can use Google Fit to analyze your activities while using apps like MyFitnessPal to help you to help you better get a grasp of it. And Google uh, Google Google Fit not only does it um, integrate with various fitness apps and devices, but it also helps pro provide a holistic view of your health and fitness. Okay, now let's move to the apps that help you with eating healthy. So again, you have my fitness pal. It messes, it, it, it messes me up all the time. Grace, check your line app. I got you covered. Thank you. Very welcome. So there's an app. Not only do you have Fitness Pal, but there's an app called Food You Kate. And it's an AI powered app that helps you make healthier food choices by providing detailed nutritional information and assigning grades to various food products. You can scan the barcodes. And when you scan the barcodes with Fujicate, it can off it, it'll offer you healthy alternatives or suggest modifications to your diet based on what your goals are. Then you have you have an app called Healthy Out. Healthy Out is an app that helps you find healthier dining options when eating out. So for those of you who love to eat out, but you're like, you know what? I can't eat out like I used to because I'm eating healthier and this particular, and I don't know what restaurants will help me eat healthy like that. Healthy Out will help you with that. 
because it uses AI algorithms to analyze restaurant menus and suggest dishes that align with your dietary preferences and health goals. Me and Grace like to eat out. You don't think we gonna have this app on our phone? And I'm a foodie. Downloading it right now. Sure. I like to eat out. I like trying different. <clears throat> I like trying different meals. I like trying different foods, different mixtures. And healthy out is wonderful. Like so, if you're if you're a vegan, healthy out, or actually you can go to Beat Meat. Uh, shout out to Law. Shameless plug. You can uh, <laughs> if you are pescatarian. If you are doing keto whatever you're doing however your eating lifestyle is healthy out will help you find dishes on menus at restaurants to help you with that then you have something called plate joy now plate joy is a meal planning app that's driven by artificial intelligence that helps you create personalized meal plans based on your dietary preferences, your health goals, and any restrictions that you have. So let's say you go to the doctor. The doctor tells you, girl, look, a boy, look, let me tell you something, because you have doctors that will talk to you like that. Trust me, they just like, you're not healthy. You fat, you ain't eating right. There are doctors that will say that to you. Trust and believe. You may be mad at them because they lack bedside manner, but they they don't sugarcoat it for you and they make you rethink your life. Okay, let me tell you something. Mm. Plate Joy. What Plate Joy does is it helps create personalized meal plans based on your dietary preferences, your health goals, and any restrictions that you have. It also provides recipes, generates grocery lists, and helps you make healthier choices while simplifying meal preparation. So you're like, man, look, I'm gonna eat healthy. I don't know where to start. Download Plate Joy. Tell Plate Joy what your preferences are, what your health goals are, any restrictions that you have. It'll give you recipes. Say, okay, well, I need to go to the grocery store. What do I need to buy? It'll generate a do you know how do you know how wonderful it is to have somebody else write out your grocery list for you? And then tell you, here's what you do with the food you just bought. Oh, and this is what you purchase. Instead of, instead of getting that big bag of imperial sugar, sorry, imperial sugar, how about you try this instead? Do Use stevia, use agave nectar, use honey, use this, use that. Like it will, it will give you different it'll give you healthier choices to use it'll recommend what you can use instead now those are those are just a few apps that help you eat healthy but then we also talked about that emotional instability which falls under the line of mental health now there are several mental health apps out there there's there are mental health mental health apps that actually allows you to to talk one on one with counselors there are some that will based on like a lot of them you have to you you have to tell them what you're going through and they'll let you know whether they can help you with artificial intelligence or if you actually need to talk to somebody like it'll tell you, we recommend you speak to a specialist. Let's help, and then they'll help you find a therapist to talk to. But then you have some that just help you with different exercises and things like that you can do. Wobot, W O E B O T. Wobot uses cognitive behavioral therapy techniques to su provide support for mental health. It engages, its, it engages in conversations with its users, helping them to identify and challenge negative thoughts and offers coping challenge, coping strategies. Well, Deanna, how does that help with me at work? Well, if you learn how to challenge your negative thoughts, if you learn coping strategies, if you learn how to identify what's going on with you, 
that flows through your business. Then there's an app called Headspace. <laughs> Headspace. Go straight to it. Well, let's, work, well, let's work on your Headspace. What you got going on up there? Now, it's not exclusively artificially intelligent based, but it is a popular meditation and mindfulness app that uses technology to guide users through various mindfulness exercises and techniques to manage stress, which is something we talked about, which taps into your ill health. Anxiety, we didn't even touch on what anxiety does to you. And it helps improve your overall well-being. So these are some, some artificial intelligence, some AI apps, AI platforms, AI software, how, however you want to say it, that help you when it comes to your ill health. Chef Jay told us one time, when you know better, you do better. Artificial intelligence helps you know better. Now, it's up to you to do better. Download an app. Go to ChatGPT. Put it in your face. Build a community of, of friends and say, okay, guys, this is what we're going to do. Let's put it together. Let's work this out. Let's do this. I'm telling you right now, I'm feeling, uh, oh, oh, good. He's on. Uh, Antonio, my fitness pal. Because let me tell y'all something. Oh, remember one of those things that we talked about was the people you associate with? If you want to get it done, you need to associate with people like Antonio. Grace knows exactly what I'm talking about. He will drive you crazy because he's the friend that will not let you commit suicide. If you tell him, man, I need to lose this weight because I'm feeling like this and I'm doing like that and I don't like this, he's going to be that friend that's going to be like, hey, didn't you say? So do you think eating that hamburger is going to help you right now? Hey, he's going to get on your nerves, but you're going to appreciate him. Because the people you associate with either cause you ill health or cause you prosperity. So who has questions, who has comments, who has concerns, who just want to say, Deanna, I don't care about what you just said. Let's hear it. Listen, I had to, I just had to uh, update the My Fitness Pal. I see now they have a a, a plan. So you gotta you gotta subscribe. My mm -hmm. fitness pal said we're not doing this for free no more. <laughs> I ain't mad at them. Okay. And my healthy out, I mean, healthy out is not available in our region. I'm sad. So I know. Yeah. So, but this was really good. This, this, this is really good. It'll really hold, it'll hold you accountable for what you say that you want to do. And like you said, my fitness pal, yes, it will let you know, hey, <laughs> I want to eat something else. <laughs> so this is really good. I really appreciate today. Oh no, I'm grateful. Thank you. Yeah, but my fitness pal be like, oh, you want to eat that pizza? One slice of that pizza gonna cost you 300 calories. You'll be like, what you mean? It's just one slice of pizza. Hmm. That Kool-Aid that your grandmama make. The the sugar with a little bit of tea that your grandmama make. <laughs> Fitness power hurts your feelings. Go ahead, Ms. Janice. Oh, I just want to say good morning to everybody. And uh, Deanna, that was great. Me just coming off a two-week kidney infection, sickness. Um, you know, and I'm like, okay, I need to do better on certain things. But uh, some of the stuff you were saying, uh, people you hang around and different kinds of uh, opinions and 
you know, a lot of that stuff can stress you out, you know. So I'm thinking some of this, you know, some of this, uh, this stressful life that I have been living for the last month kind of helped help bring that uh, illness on to me. So, you know, this is, this was just really good coming back and you talking about health and everything and, uh, you know, some changes that I need to make. I, I really appreciate this conversation. Appreciate no, it. And happy to be back. I'm healthy. My kidneys are working well. Everything is back in order and I'm back in order. <laughs> good to see you. We missed you. We missed you. Let me tell you something. Antonio, see, we don't think about it and we laugh about it when it's brought to our attention, but the seed is planted. Antonio has told us on multiple occasions, the people that you keep around you are just as toxic, if not more than the foods you put in your body. And let me, and when y'all, when that seed is planted, you start thinking, like you really start thinking like, man, the only time I eat like this is when I'm around this person. The only time I feel like this is when I'm around this person. And then when I go home, I drink, I smoke, or I eat something I'm not supposed to. This person always has me out doing this. Like this person's energy makes me feel some kind of way. And when I go home, I'm just drained of all my energy and I just have to sleep. The people you associate with can be just as toxic, if not more, than the foods you put in your body. That is a scary thought. But we don't pay attention to these things. We just think we don't feel good. We just think this. I'm going to give you all a great example of how emotions affect you health wise my ex father-in-law passed away years before like years years ago and my ex mother-in-law was always complaining about her heart hurting her heart was hurting her heart was hurting like she would she would be walking and then she kind of just crumple over like this and she take a few breathers, she go sit down. And then she started going to the doctor. She started going to the doctor, but they could never find anything. And she would just be talking to me and talking to me. And one day I told her, I said, I called her mom and said, mom, I said, there's nothing wrong with you medically. I say, you literally have a broken heart. And that's the pain you're going through. So when I talk about emotional instability, when I talk about stress, when I talk about anything that's not related to you putting something in your mouth or going out and doing something physical, it manifests physically. The stress that the people around you cause, the stress that you cause yourself, the environments that you are in, the things that you do on a daily basis, the thoughts that you think the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep will manifest physically. So when you look at yourself in the mirror, you're looking at the physical manifestation of your thoughts and of your emotions. So if your thoughts are negative, the physical manifestation of that will be overweight, health problems, heartache, you thinking you suffer with something major, like you, you, you having a stroke or you're having a heart attack or you're having low blood flow in some areas. Well, what is your thought process? What do your emotions look like? So ill health is not just related to the physical. The physical is just a manifestation when it comes to your business as an entrepreneur or if you work a job, that manifestation will affect your business. And you're going to attract customers in the same vibration as you. 
So if you want customers that can't pay their bills, that can't pay their membership to you, because they're constantly doling out money for medical bills or they're never at home or they don't ever have the energy or the people around them don't allow them to even touch the book that they bought from you. That's what you're going to attract because it's who you are. I think it's safe to say that we are our first customer. So how we are to ourselves as a customer in our own business is how our customers are going to respond to us. So become the customer you want. Be the healthy customer. Be the mentally stable customer. Be the customer that because I love who I am and provide for my family, I know that if I get a membership, I got this membership, be it $19.99 a month or $297.99 a month. I know I can do it. Become your first customer. If you understand what your customers, if you understand what you're going through, you know what your customers are going through. Antonio used to tell us all the time, find a need and fill it. Find a need and fill it. Find a need and fill it. So if you know you suck at such and such, you, you, you suck at putting calendars, calendars together. There are people out there just like you. Find a need and fill it. And you will start and you will start drawing to you the customers that you're filling the need for because you feel the need for yourself. When I tell you, I suck at business plans, but I need one. So I used artificial intelligence to give me an outline for a business plan that is fundable. I can't begin to tell you how many times I've had questions about business plans since then. Because those who who are at my vibrational equal are saying, hey, I need that too. Hey, I need that too. But if I'm not, if what I do at home also manifests at work, if I don't finish it for myself, how am I going to help? my customers so think about that think about how you are at home and how it affects how you are at work and then use artificial intelligence or the apps or everything we've been talking about to help you go from here to here So do we have any questions, comments, concerns? Or do you, if you, do you just want to tell me to shut up and stop talking so you can get on with your day? The floor is open. I'm just saying. You, you're doing well, okay? Speaking well. All right. Well, Grace, tell us what's on the plan, on the schedule for today. All right. Today, 5.30 p.m. Central, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific. We have Let's Study a Book. With Mr. And Mrs. Phil and Susan Sorrentino. Go ahead, Mr. Phil. Yeah, I'm going to give you a little teaser. We're going to start. It's called Fight the Fighting. In 2002, I was invited by Coretta Scott King to speak at the Elizabeth Baptist, uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta at a birthday celebration for Dr. King. It was a great honor to be invited, and I was prepared to give a speech about the differences between Dr. King's philosophy of nonviolence and President George W. Bush's statement after 9-11. Having arrived at the church, I was escorted into a room where I was was waiting before to meet Mrs. King. When the greeter came in and asked, are you ready to meet Mrs. King and Mrs. Bush now? I was stunned. I had no idea Laura Bush was gonna be there. I was totally unprepared. Okay, Miss Nonviolent Feminist, how are you gonna pull this off? 
talking about the president's right in front of the woman who he, who he, he is married, who, who is married to him. So that's how we're going to start tonight. Wow. <laughs> yes, have to hear how that played out. <laughs> yes. And then at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, we have the Humor Consultants Show, aka Wins and Challenges, where we come on and um, celebrate each other's wins and uh, help each other with our challenges so that they can turn to wins for the next week. So come on and join us this evening. All right, all right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is Monday, June 5th of the year 2023. Let's go out. Let's be let's be great. Let's be awesome. Let's dominate. Oh wait, hold on. That was supposed to flow. You can plant better. You can dominate. <laughs> I love you all. Good so job, much. Diana. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You are so good. You're doing so well. And I'm so proud of you. And I'm glad he kicked you off the bus and made you be in the driver's seat. You are so good at this. And I'm just, I just can hug you right now. Good job. Oh, yay. Air hug, air hug, air hug. <laughs> Love you all. Love you more. 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 Love you more.